Good morning and welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church and School on this festive Easter day. It is a joy to gather for worship. At this time, please turn in your bulletin to page 2, Easter morning at the tomb, John chapter 20. Please stand. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and, one at, and the other at the foot. They asked her, Mary said, At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was him. Jesus said, Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Jesus said to her, She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
Please turn in the four part of your hymnal to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro it is on page four of your bulletin. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shines in You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy world. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, for our redemption you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of the Resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Two years. Two years. That's how long it's been since there's been in-person Easter worship in this sanctuary. Pastor Renfro and I remember last year, how can we forget it? Remember it? Uh, COVID-19 shutdowns were just a few weeks old, and Trinity's worship services were being recorded. There was no in-person worship. Despite the beautiful pyramids and the fragrance of the lilies, I'm telling you, Pastor Renfro and I struggled just a bit to find that Easter excitement as we looked out upon uh, a few of these um, photos of people taped up to the back of their pews, and we declared that Christ was risen indeed. Hallelujah. I mean, due to circumstances, it wasn't even Easter when we recorded Easter. I think it was like Good Friday afternoon or something like that. Well, thanks be to God, that is past. Easter is here, and you are here. Some having waited two years, some of you waited longer than that. Yes, you are here, and I am here, and Christ Jesus is here. And that's the theme this morning. Christ has risen. He is here. The tomb where Jesus' body had been placed on Friday evening by Joseph of Arimathea was on Sunday morning found empty of Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome arrived there with their burial spices. The women were surprised that the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Who had done that? They didn't know. And the women were alarmed upon entering to see a young man, not Jesus, sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Dutifully, I believe, those women did just as the angel said. I'm talking about the angel's first instruction. They saw the place where they laid him. Mary 1 and Mary 2 and Salome, three sets of eyes, did what the angel said. <clears throat> they directed their gaze at that space in the tomb where Jesus' body had been lying. And with their eyes, these woman, women could confirm that he was not there. He was not there. The angel was there. They were there. Jesus was not there. What to make of it all? When a loved one dies, especially if it's very suddenly or very tragically, it's common for the family, grief-stricken and utterly shell-shocked, to wish and to wish and to hope against hope that it will all be shown to have been just a dream, that they'll wake up the next day and find their loved one with them again. Well, the words of God's angel that morning cut out any possibility that the death of Jesus on Good Friday had been just a dream. The angel's words, you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. No, it had not all been a dream. The crucifixion of Jesus had been very real. And we can be glad of that. After all, many divine promises and assurances would be null and void without the shedding of Jesus' blood and his death. There's Isaiah 53's, and with his stripes we are healed. There's 1 John chapter 1's, the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. Not to mention our Lord's own words at the Last Supper, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. In the communion liturgy later, we'll hear that by his death, he has destroyed death. Yes, friends, we may be glad that Jesus died. And the angel impressed that truth upon the women. Jesus had died. It had really happened. But then something more had happened. Jesus had risen. 
The reason Jesus' body was not there that Sunday morning was not because he'd been carried off by some perverse grave robber or even by his own crafty disciples. Please. With the fear those men exhibited the night of Jesus' arrest and trial, there's no way they'd have found the nerve to to attempt some stunt like that. Now, the reason why Jesus' body was not there Sunday morning was because Jesus had risen. In short, Jesus was alive again and had departed his tomb. That's what you do when you rise. Sounds simple, perhaps, to us today, but that day was all too much for the women to take in. They were overwhelmed. They were beside themselves, trembling, and astonishment had seized them. Did you know the Greek word translated astonishment is ecstasis? But I tell you, friends, don't think in terms of the happy ecstasy that we may have in our minds. No, this was a complicated, confused distressing jumble of profound emotion. Remember the last line of Mark's account? He says that the women were afraid. See, the distance in space and time between there and then and here and now, together with the fact that all of us are very, very familiar with the Easter story, makes it very different for us now compared with those women back then. I tell you, had it been us I'm pretty sure we would have been beside ourselves as well. Yet in time, the women would be able to give more sober thought to the words spoken by that heavenly messenger. He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So, there was a little Galilee reunion plan. But stop. Would that necessarily be a good thing? How would it be? How would you feel to be in the presence of Jesus? Just possibly you'd feel afraid to be so close to Jesus, just maybe. It might occur to you that as God, Jesus sees, He sees even the secrets of our hearts. You have secrets, I have secrets that no one else in this room knows. Jesus knows. Maybe considerations like that went through Peter's mind in the early days of Jesus' ministry. You remember this? When they were on the Sea of Galilee, there had been a miraculous catch of fish. Peter was a fisherman. He knew how things, he knew a miracle when he saw it. And Peter, Luke tells us, cried out, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter was a sinful man, all right, but he didn't know the half of it yet. Clarity on the matter hit Peter like a ton of bricks the night Jesus was on trial when Peter by the fire denied, denied, and denied again that he knew the accused. And then the rooster crowed. But friends, in a sense, it was true that Peter did not know Jesus. I mean, Not only did Peter not yet comprehend that as the Christ, Jesus must suffer, die, and rise again, but Peter also did not yet comprehend how gracious Jesus was, how eager to forgive. Peter was about to find out from the women coming back from the empty tomb. You remember what the angel had charged them to do? The first instruction was, see the place where they laid him. The second instruction was, go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. Now I ask you, which two words there are noteworthy? Which two words are noteworthy? The answer is, and Peter, and Peter. Why did the angel say, and Peter? Wouldn't it have been enough just to say, go tell his disciples? Peter was one of the disciples. Why and Peter? Well, the reason is because Peter had sinned a great sin. And Peter's anguished heart needed to know that Jesus forgave Peter with a great forgiveness. In time, Peter came to feel comforted and at peace in Jesus' presence. No longer afraid, no longer ashamed, no longer alarmed. 
Peter came to believe with all his heart that Jesus was gracious and forgiving even to someone like Peter. Jesus is gracious and forgiving even to the likes of me and you. You see, Christ's death, even though it took place so, so long ago, was of such efficacy, his blood of such potency, that its saving power stretches forward all the way to today, right to your doorstep. Because of the death his son Jesus died, God pronounces forgiveness on small sinners, great sinners, and all sinners in between. Where do you suppose you fit? At the end of the day, all that matters is that Jesus pours out his forgiveness richly upon every troubled heart that trusts in him. For Jesus, who came to life that first Easter, lives yet today. Paul wrote to the Romans, death no longer has dominion over him. And the best part is, the best part is, this living, forgiving Lord is here. Jesus, the one whom Philippians 2 calls highly exalted. We heard that in the Palm Sunday epistle last week. Jesus, the highly exalted one, is not for that reason distant and removed from us. No. Christ, though risen and glorified, ascended and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, is not, according to those words, separated from us in some faraway place called there. On the contrary, Jesus' exaltation means that he is able to be present wherever his dear people gather. Jesus is able to be, in the deepest sense of the word, here. Jesus has declared for our abundant comfort his nearness to us, his real presence among us. In Luke chapter 10, He says, the one who hears you, hears me. That is to say, his ministers are his messengers. And his voice is heard when they preach his word. Matthew 18, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Well, we are way over that quota today, I'll assure you. And in Mark 14, take, this is my body. By his word, the bread in the Lord's Supper is the very body of Christ, the wine, Christ's true blood. And in Matthew 28, very familiar words to all of us, and behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. How much more clear could he be? So blessed Easter 2021, dear friends in Christ, blessed Easter to you. I'm so glad that it's not cardboard faces that I'm looking at, but the real thing, that you're here, I'm glad that Trinity's young and old are here, men and women, boys and girls, and all our cherished visitors. Most of all, I'm glad that Christ is here, and he is. In the words of the angel, slightly modified, I tell you, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is here today in word and sacrament for you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We stand to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy awe at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. Lord, in your mercy, be with Matthew, our synod president, Brian, our district president, and all our pastors. Keep them faithful to deliver to your people the apostolic gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy, bless Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil, and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy, give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood in faith, Overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe every tear from all faces. Lord, in your mercy, we join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. We worship God with our offerings.
Please turn in your hymnal to page 160. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of his resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. selections all the way through before singing. Uh, please watch me. I'll cue you when it's time for the singing to begin.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Assured of the victory Jesus has won for us by the power of his resurrection, we depart in the peace of the God of our salvation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.